Hello and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we've got a puzzle for you called Chi Manifest by Zendari. And I'm sure I've done a Zendari puzzle on the channel before, um, but it feels like it was a few months ago. Now, the reason we're doing this, actually, it's a rarity. Uh, this one has been test solved by Mark, of all people. And Mark, Mark just said this is just an absolutely brilliant puzzle. Um, he said something like, I wish I got to do a puzzle this good every day. So that is that is praise indeed for, uh, from someone who solves as many puzzles as Mr. Goodliff. Um, so very well done to Zendari on constructing something that's uh, that Mark is eulogizing about. And I just hope I'll be able to solve it. Um, it's, it's sort of a yin yang hybrid with with sort of slight twist on region some lines um, and I'll read the rules in a moment or two. Let's start though by saying thank you to all those of you who joined us last night for the Teji stream. Mark and I need to hang our heads in shame though because we well we did solve a, what felt like a lot of puzzles but not enough puzzles to get to the end of the game so there is going to be at least one more Teji stream uh, which we will schedule soon. Um, that they yeah, be in no doubt we are going to try and finish the game uh, but last night was not was not the correct time to do that um, other than that what do I need to tell you about I'm going to do some birthdays actually I'm going to say happy birthday or happy belated birthday to Ma Matteo um, and that's from your Cam Camellia Sita Nelly Ann um, so I'm not sure how late we are with that Matteo but um, forgive me um, well it's, it's not really my fault to be honest. Um, next, we've also got a, a 70th birthday to announce today to a cardiac surgeon, uh, Swirup, uh, from West Bengal. That is amazing where Cracking the Cryptic uh, ends up. Um, and I think uh, Swirup is currently enjoying a holiday with his daughter in Cannes, which sounds very nice indeed. So hopefully you'll be able to find some uh, chocolate cake there. Uh, Gato, is it? I don't know. I'm not going to test my French in the middle of a video. Um, but anyway, obviously, we hope you have a brilliant birthday and a great holiday too. Um, next, oh yes, now some of you have been asking about this and I have been uh, dilatory, I haven't meant to be. Um, Matt Boyack's video on Fistimafel's masterpiece uh, puzzle, Ancient Wall. Yes, I, I will be putting that up on the channel soon. It will probably be Saturday morning. Um, what I will do if I remember though, is I will I will create a link under this video to that puzzle because um, to, to this point, this was a present for our patrons as part of the um, a Christmas present that we, we gave to our patrons on Patreon on pa as a patron reward. Um, so Ancient Wall is one of the puzzles uh, in that in that Sudoku hunt, and I will I will try and remember to create a link that you'll be able to at least have a look at if you if you're not a patron, you've not seen the puzzle, you need to check it out before you watch the video because it, it's it's that good. Um, and speaking of patron rewards. We are now reading the names of successful solvers of the Glum Hippo Sudoku Hunt. This is the fossil hunt that we've been running since the start of February. The praise has been absolutely brilliant. I'm unsurprised about that. Um, and well, I, what I do is I'm going to read out these names. And this is in the order uh, of the solutions, we, the correct solutions we've received. So Yang Gazelius was first in. Um, then Adam Jaziri, Andrea Pachera, Cody Newman, Nathan Gilbert, Lindsay and Aaron Frederick, Kelvin Graham, Nicholas Ole, Kappa Teki, Thomas Sylvester, Leon Zhang, Liam Landrum, Wu Sung Young, Matt Boss, Anthony Anderson, Ozzy Carl, Harsh Podder, and Fool on Hill. All of you sent in the correct entries. Very well done indeed. And now we get to play Zendari's puzzle. So I will read you the rules of this one. What's going on with Chi Manifest? I don't know what a Chi Manifest is. <laughs> you, you guys will have to tell me. Um, oh, and by the way, I will be out and about. It's a rarity for me to leave my, leave my, my attic in Surrey, but this evening I will be in London. So if you happen to see, um, see, see the bloke that you sometimes watch on Cracking the Cryptic, <laughs> <laughs> in a pub around King's Cross, do come and say hello. Um, anyway, normal Sudoku rules apply. Shade the grid using two colours such that all instances of each colour are orthogonally connected 
and no two by two area is completely one color. So this is standard yin yang rules. So what we've got to do is to somehow apportion the grid. I think we can do massive, this sort of strange adulterated E to make this work. And then, oh, hang on, need to make those longer or we're going to have two by twos. So this is, I think, a possible, possibly valid yin yang arrangement. And the reason it's valid is you can see that every green cell is part of an area that's connected to every other green cell orthogonally, which means that it, they all share an edge. So if we try to put that one in as a green cell, now we've broken the puzzle because this green cell does not share an edge with any other green cell and it must. So you can see all the green cells are connected, all the orange cells are connected orthogonally and no two by two area is entirely one color. So, you know, this is why, for example, if we were to switch that round and make it orange, the puzzle's now broken. There's a two by two there of orange and a two by two there of orange, and we mustn't do that. So let's restart. Uh, <laughs> that was quite garish, wasn't it? Now, next, next rule. Blue lines must have an equal sum n within each color they pass through. If a blue line passes through a color multiple times, each individual pass sums to n. All lines must cross colors at least once. So let's try and think about what that means. So it's going to be tricky this because we're going to have to achieve a coloring of the grid. So let's let's do some coloring. So let's imagine that we worked out that this line in terms of its yin yang coloring looked like this. Then I think what we're saying is that those two cells, whatever the digits are, and let's put some examples in to see if we can do it. So we'll put four and six. No, that's a silly because this is a one cell total. So that's not going to work. Let's go to four and five. Four plus five equals nine. So that would have to go in here. And then these two uh, green cells would have to be two digits that sum up to nine because that is the N basically for this line. So we could make that one, eight, two, seven or three, six, and that would, they would all work. Something like that, I think is how a line could work in the puzzle. And then two cells connected by a black dot are in the ratio of one to two. So the, that's a posh way of saying that one of those digits is double the other. So if this was an eight, that would have to be a four. If this was a two, this would have to either be a one or it would have to be a four in order to ensure the ratio between the digits was in a one with one to two. And that's it. I do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video. I shall adjust my glasses, settle in my seat. And now let's get cracking. And do I start with the secrets of yin yang? I probably ought to. I mean, they're bound to come in at some point during the solve. Let's talk about the two secrets I know about yin yang puzzles. Um, you can never have checkerboard shading in a yin yang. Now, why is that, you might say? Well, the reason is it's because the colors have to join to the, it, the, the, each other orthogonally. Now, you can see if we try and join up these orange squares and make an orthogonal connection between them, however, whatever route we take to achieve that. If we go over, if we go round this cell, let's try that for example, there's no way now that this green cell can orthogonally connect to this green cell. And if on the other hand, we say, okay, well that, that way round didn't work. Let's try it the other way round. Let's try and go around the other green cell. You can see you get exactly the same problem. This green cell now can't connect to this one. So in yin yang puzzles, you can never have a checkerboard. And the other thing that that, well, the thing that that tends, the other thing that that means, I suppose, is that the perimeter of a yin yang puzzle is restricted in the sense that it can only change color basically once. So as you go around, say that these were all the same color, let's just say these were all the same color. And then let's imagine that you changed color here and these became gray. Then you could go back well, if you if you were to go back to green here, if you if you if you somehow prove this cell was green, you would have to make the whole of the rest of the perimeter green. So there is exactly one change of color in the perimeter. We go we go from green to gray, or I suppose two changes of color. We go from that color and then we go back to green. But what we can't do, for example, is have 
four different areas of color in the perimeter because we get into the checkerboard problem. To connect this domino to these cells, it doesn't matter what route we take. Once we've done it, these green cells can never um, touch those green cells orthogonally. It's like a big checkerboard, a big skew if checkerboard to try and do that. Um, so, so, <laughs> all right, they're the two secrets of yin yang. Um, right. Now, the problem here is I really have not got any idea i suppose there are two areas that look like they might be interesting to start the puzzle perhaps this line down here which is quite long or perhaps perhaps more likely this box which is almost a complete box of the sudoku so is there some secretage going? There's another, because maybe it's to do with the Sudoku secret. Hang on, let me just think about this. Um, because obviously a complete box of a Sudoku uh, contains digits that sum to 45. That is the secret. Normally I only tell my favorite people, but of course you're definitely one of those people if if you're still watching the video now. So I don't really see how to use the secret on this, I have to say. And I don't really see how to use this long line either. Is it? What am I, I'm not, I'm not appreciating something about this. It actually feels like I've been given quite a lot of clues here as well. I think this had three stars out of five for difficulty on Logic Masters Germany. So I'm tempted to say this must, it must be some perimeter trick. There must be some way of determining. Yeah, well, hmm. I can see that there has to be a change of color in the perimeter along here because of the rules of the puzzle. I think the rules said that, yeah, all lines must cross colors at least once. Okay, so those three squares are not all the same color, are they? There is a change of color there. So if I can find another, possibly down here, if we can find another place on the perimeter where there has to be a color change, then we will know in terms of the perimeter secret that we found our two spots on the perimeter where there can be a color change and that will be all we're allowed. So is it actually possible, I'm wondering, for those four cells to all be the same color? Now, well, these would obviously sum to at least at least six because they would be one plus two plus three that could be i actually don't think that's difficult at all is it i could do that those could be a different color like they could add to like 10 they could add to 10 they could add to 10 right okay so it's there's definitely not a forced color change here um now no i don't think that's going to work Ah, no, <laughs> this one. Um, no, right, okay, so it's... Maybe I've got to, ah, maybe I look at all of those cells together. Can, can all of those cells be the same color? That would certainly, to avoid a two by two, that would have to be a different color. Okay, so are all of these the same color? If they were all the same color, these three digits would add up to this one. And these two digits, well, those two digits. Uh, hang on a minute. How do you do? Right, this line looks interesting all of a sudden. If these two were the same, no. Oh, that's real. Oh, right. It's not. It's, it's exactly the last place you look. Right. Those two digits can't be the same color. Because how do we then divide the line up? 
Now, you might say, okay, well, we could make both of those orange. Well, you, <laughs> uh, you can't do that because then these two digits which should have the same number in them because each time the line enters a color, it must have the same total. So those would have to be the same number. They're in the same box of the Sudoku. So that doesn't work. But that means the line is going to be broken up into a, a two, a one, and a one. So if I make this cell green, then I have to make this cell orange because the line needs to have two colors. But now those two digits will have to be the same. So you can't do it. These, these two little extremities of this line are of a different color. So that means that the two changes of color we're looking for in the perimeter are somewhere in there. So there's sort of a perimeter change here and there's a somewhere in there there's a perimeter change. And that means the rest of the perimeter has to be, so between these two color changes, we must have the same color. So we don't know, <laughs> I'm gonna use green and gray because the garish green is too vulgar even actually let me just look at that oh no it's i think it is a bit too much isn't it let's let's make those squares green no we'll make those squares gray i've changed my mind again i'm going to make those squares gray so uh, because i know there cannot be a color change between here and here these squares can't have a color change and they've got to be the opposite color because we can't have two instances we can't like have green in here and green in here and gray in the middle because then there would be too many changes of color in the perimeter so we, we reach i think a steady state of this position and now we can do some yin yang can't we because that cell has to avoid a two by two that cell has to avoid a two by two that cell has to be green otherwise that lines all the same color and <laughs> now we can do um so if this was no yeah okay remember as well that these have to be different colors so if this was green that would be gray and i'd have changed too many changes of color in the perimeter so that this cell is definitely gray and that cell is definitely green now does that work the other side as well i think that must work the other side so if this was green and that was gray, yes that, that works the same way here so that's got to be gray that's got to be green this one we don't know actually i'm going to take the labeling out of this one because that was looking a bit like a two by two to me when it was shaded and it might not be a two by two if this is gray that isn't necessarily a two by two right okay so um no i already looked at this line didn't i at the bottom so that's not going to be oh right so this line i'm adding up three different digits oh no that's fine that could just be gray and then that could be a, a domino or that could be green and that could be green no sorry that's not where we look next wow um I thought that was going to be the break in getting the perimeter, but I don't actually see how to use this. It could be. Come on, brain. <laughs> Come on, brain. I'm trying to buy you time <laughs> and you're being useless. Oh. Um. Do I have to somehow use the fact there's a color change here? That doesn't look terribly appetizing. Oh, if that's green, they would all be green. No, okay. I can prove that that's grey. If this is green, all of those have to be green. But then this has to be grey to avoid the line being one colour. But now that cell is, is N and that cell is also N because the line changes colour from in going from row 2, column 1 to row 2, column 2. 
so these two would have the same digit in them and that's not going to work so that square is gray now if that square is gray we've got the same problem if that square is gray how do I divide the line to avoid having a duplicated digit? I don't think I can. I, ca I now can't make both of these green because these two digits will be the same number. And if I make that grey, this must be green, and then those two have the same number. And if I make that green and this grey, then those two numbers have the same number. There's no way to divide the line in effect. So this square here is green, which means this... Ah, oh, done it. Right, so this we've done the top of the grid. We've got a complete sequence of greenliness and this is the only spot on the perimeter but how on earth that's not going to be disambiguated i don't think by anything possibly by possibly by the shading of this cell uh, if this was green that would have that would be forced to be gray by yin yang logic to avoid a two by two um, either that or it's going to be numbers on that line. I don't see how to do that now. If, if that is green, that has to be grey to avoid a 2x2 two two on its left side as well. So then that would have to be grey to avoid those two numbers being the same. It's a fascinating idea, this. I don't think I've... S have I seen this? I, probably, I must have done an idea where the, the region sum lines sort of... Um, they operate not by reference to their 3x3s, three but by references to the shading that you have to impose on the grid. It's a really, really nice idea. Um, but... Uh, is it this... Is it, it's not... Oh, it's not numbers, is it? It's not thinking about what I've got to put on this black dot. I doubt it because this black dot, and I might be doing Zendari a massive disservice here, feels like a disambiguating black dot that's been put in to solve some deadly pattern at the end of the grid, at the end of the solve. Hmm. Um, okay, but maybe that is a way to think about this. If this was green, those three digits would add up to at least six, which would mean that this cell was at least a six. And therefore, and that could, in fact, that would make that an eight. If, the, if this is green, that is an eight, because it couldn't be a six, because if it was a six, that would be a three by black dot logic, but there would need to be a three in that one, two, three, triple to add up to six. So if that is green, that is eight, that is four, and that would be a one, two, five triple, which is, so a lot happens actually, if we can make this green. But if it's gray, you just have a domino here adding to the same as a domino there, which takes all the pressure off the, off the situation. Can we, I don't think we can divide this line up. Clear Maverick. Maverick's been much more active the last couple of days. Um, well, this is either... It's either green here and grey here. Let me just look at that for a second. Green here, grey here. That may... Oh, well, okay, it's not that. <laughs> That's very clear. Okay, it's not that because this cell has no value then. I mean, in terms of yin yang, I've got a I've got a potential two by two there and a potential two by two there, and that won't work. Right, that's interesting. So this line is either it's either double green, or it's both of those are grey. Basically, we've now learned these two are the same colour. We don't know what that colour is. That would be grey. That would be if if this was the situation. Then to avoid. Um, to avoid a 2x2 two two here I've got to make this grey and then to avoid a checkerboard I've got to make that green so it would look something like this I'm just going to take a look at this for a second let me just mull this over I'm 
don't think I see a problem with that. I think this digit is then quite high because it's the sum of three other digits. So that's at least a six. But then all there's no pressure on this. Right, sorry, that doesn't seem to be terribly helpful. I just check the other way around. If this is double grey, then that's green to avoid a two by two, which means that's grey to avoid a checkerboard. Oh, that's gorgeous. Right, that doesn't work. Okay. Um, I've got too many low digits now in this, in this version. We've got too many low digits in the puzzle because look at this box. I've got those three digits adding up to that number and those three digits adding up to that number. And both this number and this number have to be single digit totals. Well, we can't do it, but I mean, those three digits are different numbers to those three digits. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 is 21. So the minimum I could make those two cells add up to is 21. And I can't make them both single digits with, if, with that constraint. That's gorgeous. So that means that... I've forgotten which way around that was. That, that was grey. Double grey is wrong. So double green is correct, which means this is grey. It means to avoid a checkerboard, that becomes green. And now this digit is at least a 6. Um, because these digits can would be a minimum of one, two, three, which means this digit is six or eight because the only black dot valid digits in Sudoku that are six or higher are six and eight. And you can see that for yourself. So if you try and put seven or nine in here, this digit will be impossible because it will either be three and a half or four and a half, or it'll be 14 or 18, and they won't work from a Sudoku perspective. So this digit is three or four. Is it, oh, no. Oh, no, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Oh, no, it's not fine. No, I'm wrong. It's not fine. If that's six, that's three. But then those three digits have to be a one, two, three triple. You'd have two threes in the box. That's gorgeous again. So that's eight. That's four. And this eight, eight sequence now has to sum to eight without using four. So that's got to be one, two, five. Now I've got digits in the grid, I've got pencil marks in the grid, I've got I've got a potential two by two here, so that's got to be grey. And this line is now interesting because how do you break it up? If you if you there's no way to break it up is what I think. I think all of those have to now be grey, which means this digit is high. Because if we if we try and introduce some greens Anywhere here, we're going to have two single cells of color in, in, this, in this stretch. I mean, if I make this green and I make that green, these two are the same number. If I change and make this gray, all four numbers are the same. So that would have to be gray. And then if I put make this green again, these two numbers are the same. So the whole thing has to be gray. And that's lovely because that means these, well, ooh, okay, I've now got loads of low digits in this column. And this digit has to be, um, well, in fact, it can't be six, can it? Because I want to say it can't be seven either. If this is six or seven, I'm picking these five digits from only four different numbers. Because if this is six, this is one, two, three. And the fourth digit is a five, but there are five cells to fill. So I'll have to have a repeated digit. If it's seven, this is one, two, four. So this is, can't be eight by Sudoku. So this is nine. And now it's not one, three, five, because I've got, if it's one, three, five here, I've got the same problem. Um, those, those five different digits filled with four different numbers. So I now know. So now I know there's a two on this line because there are only three different ways of making nine in three cells: two, three, four, one, two, six, and one, three, five. And I've just ruled out the one that didn't have two on it. And if there is a two on this line, there's no two here, which means this is a two. There's no. There's now no one on this line because there's a one five pair at the top. So this is two, three, four. Whoopsie. Uh, this means these are six, seven, eight at the bottom of the grid. And, okay, so now we can think about these digits and just make the maths work, I think. We've got to place three, six, 
yeah okay it's three six and seven into these squares but those two have to add up to those two so that's going to be six and this must be a three seven pair to make the maths work and that square's got to be grey to avoid a two by two this is lovely isn't it it's very very clever um and super interesting now i can see there's a one on this domino because if there wasn't the minimum sum here would be a five and a six because two three four have gone in the box um so there's definitely a one there because we're adding up to a single digit total and it's not one five because that would give six one six would give seven right so it's one six or one seven it can't be one eight so this digit is a seven or an eight by mathematics and hmm, okay now we might be stuck we can instead of that say right that digit is where i'm going to go next because i can color it in if that was gray those two digits are the same number again that's this is it's just really really nice this so now this is a prob well it's a problem for this cell because this is a single digit total oh, i've just noticed there's got to be oh look there's loads going on here actually this line is profoundly profoundly difficult in a good way if this digit was an eight the green sum here would be at least nine which it cannot be so that's definitely not an eight in fact i'm noticing i can't make this a two even so this yes yeah, so this this is a one it simply is a one it can't be a three because this this pair would add up to nine which is impossible so that's a one which doesn't seem to do anything immediate but we now know this is not six because it's the sum of this and this and this digit has to be gray because then if it wasn't gray we'd be adding up to at least nine in those three cells and if that's gray that's green to avoid a two by two and oh right oh I've, yeah okay i can do this right now look at this well look at this string that is a string of four digits which are summing up to this total so we must have a repeat because if these were all different digits they would add up to a minimum of one plus two plus three plus four which is ten so there has to be a repeat and the repeated the only digit you can repeat in this string is this one you can't have two digits the same along the, this string of three cells. You will break the rules of Sudoku. So that digit has got to be the same as that digit by Sudoku, but it cannot be a one. So it's got to be a two. And then we've got to minimize these with one and three. And that gives us just enough leeway to make an eight here and a seven here and a six here. And we're off to the races. <laughs> um... And we can probably colour this line in. Let me just let me just stare at this for a second or two and see if we can deduce anything. All of the all of the line digits look in box eight now are, are big digits. They're all at least four. So, I want to say that means these two cells have got to be the same colour. Because if this cell sat on its own as a colour, then there's no way, either this would then be a 6, or we're adding up those two digits to equal this but we know the minimum sum of those two digits is nine because we can't use one two and three so these are the same color whatever color oh so if these are both gray green i can just do a massive great string of green there if these are both green no that doesn't work right okay I, I think i because these have to be the same color 
there's a problem. Look, if we... Yeah, I don't think this works. If, if these are both green, then that digit by 2 by 2 has to be grey. But that digit by 2 by 2 has to be green. And I have managed to create myself a little checkerboard there. So that's not right. Whoopsie, 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 whoopsie. I didn't mean to do that. So I think these have to both be grey. Which means... Yes, okay. And then this digit is at least a 4, because it can't be 1, 2 or 3, which means this domino is adding up to at least 10, which means this has to extend. And once this has to extend, that has to also be green, because we know that um, we can't put a 10 into this square. So in fact, we get a, um, a nearly get a 2 by 2 of green there. So that's got to be grey. We get a nearly 2 by 2 here. So that's got to be green nori nori now we've almost got a checkerboard there so that has to be green that has to be gray to avoid a checkerboard this has to be green to avoid a two by two that has to be green to avoid a checkerboard good grief this has to be gray to avoid a two by two this is mad and oh yes okay and now this little domino is green but it's not attached to its friends so it has to sort of rise up through this chute that we've now created. That's got to be green to avoid a two by two. That's got to be green to avoid a checkerboard. Oh my goodness. Look, we've, we've basically colored in half the puzzle now. Um, yes, okay. And those three digits are a minimum of four, five, and six. Four, five, and six add up to 15. Okay, so if that's a minimum of 15, this is a minimum of 15. Well, it's also a maximum of 15 if that's a 9. So that's a 9. This is a 4, 5, 6 triple. This is a 7, 8 pair. There's an 8 here, so we could do some Sudoku. Outrageous, Sendari. Outrageous making me do Sudoku at a mere 37 minutes into your puzzle. Um, now, what does that mean? I... Ooh, I don't quite know, actually. Uh, hmm, no. Ah, come on. I feel like all of this stuff we've just done must be hugely... Hugely useful. Yes, okay, I can colour this square. Because if this was grey, those two digits would be equal because they're both single digit totals. So that's got to be green, which means that's got to be gray to avoid a, which means that's got to be gray to avoid a, a checkerboard. So that's just done a load more shading, right? This digit is six, seven or, oh, in fact, both of those digits are that digit, right? Look at this. So, oh, oh, that's really lovely, actually. Wow. Ah, oh, that's just lovely. Right, these are both seven. Let me explain. So you can see we've got three digits here summing to this digit. But they're also summing to that digit because that's also a single digit instance of greenliness along the line. So those two digits must be the same number. And they, they're at least six because the minimum I could make these squares would be one, two and three. Well, this digit can't be six or nine and that digit can't be eight. So the only digit that they can be is seven with a one, two, four triple, which puts a two here and a one, four pair here. And that somehow, nah, I was going to do, I thought that was going to do mighty work, divine work, but no. That's no longer a two is all I can see I'm getting from that. Okay, um, it's probably this line, but I'm just trying to see whether I can think of anything else clever here. Still haven't done the perimeter. That's also perhaps worthy of noting. Um, I don't know what this line adds up to either. Can I do some sort of Sudoku? Probably. There's oh there's oh there's an that's not what I was expecting. I now I'm worried I've broken this. I, I saw before that this line was a four cell sequence. 
But now I've actually got an 8 on it, which is very surprising. Hmm. You could repeat a digit, which you might need to here. If, if, if there's no repeated digit on this four cell sequence, it's adding up to 14. Oh, now I can do that. That's fine. Um... This could be five nine. It can't be six eight. Sudoku, Sudoku. Anybody? Hmm. It's a, uh, it's a mystery. Oh one. Oh look, in this row there's a one over here. Okay, well that's not surprising because I could see they were going to have to be low. These digits ah, uh, these digits are a two three pair, which I can do. Two three. So I need four five four I can place here this is a five nine pair I think how is this not resolved oh three and seven are oh that's three in the corner that's three in the spotlight losing its religion um just doing a bit of sudoku up here I should be able to get that digit now which looks like it's a six by Sudoku. And now those two squares are a five nine pair, which apparently is not resolved. Probably not resolved anyway. And what's so what's going on back in back at the bottom of the grid now? This five nine pair is not resolved. Oh, oh, that's lovely. Right. This line now has a repeated digit on it, which is going to be this one. Um, because if it didn't, remember I worked out it had to be 14. Well, if it's 14, how do I make that domino add up to 14? It breaks this cell. It breaks that cell now because it would have to be 5, 9, which it cannot be. So, so this is adding up to at least 16 if it's different digits. And we can't get 16 here because the maximum is 14. I mean, that's not no in fact the maximum is now 13 which even 13 is quite difficult i'm pretty sure there has to be a nine on this line um yeah that maybe that's the way to approach this if there was no nine on this line what could it be a maximum of five plus four which is nine which would require both of those to be zero which clearly won't work right so there is a nine on the line that makes this resolved. These squares are now, right, they're 3, 4, and 9 in some order. Not 3, 4, and 0. We know the 9's on the line. So this either adds up to 13 or 12, but this adds up to 9. Right, so again, it's just gorgeous setting. Because what digit do we now know for sure must appear in this domino? And the answer to that is 1. Because if this is 13, which is the most it could be, these squares have to add up to 4, which would have to be a 1-3 pair. So it's either a 1-3 pair or it's a 1-2 pair, which means this digit is now proved to be 8. This is 1. There is a repeated 1 on the line. There's a 1 in this domino and a 1 in this domino. So where does the 1 go in row 4? Well, it can't go in those cells. It doesn't go there. doesn't go there. So it goes here. 1, 7, and, come on, um, that's not 2, I suppose, we get rid of 2 from that one. I've, oh, yeah, okay, look, I've got a 1, 3, 4 triple in row 6 now, so I need to place 5s, 8s, and 9s into these squares which might matter. Um, ooh, I, can, I can almost stop that being grey, because if that's grey... Oh no, I can... I can, Surely I can stop this being grey. I, I hadn't seen I've got one, two, four in the box. I was thinking if this was grey, this would have to be green to make sure the line was pied and had two colours. Um, but this could be six or nine, but it can't be, can it? 
because the minimum digits, if this is grey, the minimum digits we could put on the line would be 3 plus 5 plus 6, which is many more than 9. So that is green, which means that's also green. Now, OK, so now we've got to avoid a checkerboard. So that becomes green. Um, OK, I don't think I have used the secret. I'm about to use the secret. So I told you the secret earlier. This was the Sudoku secret, which is about the digits. In the 45th minute of the video, we are using the fact that that box adds up to 45 to tell us the parity of this line. And we can do that because, um, well, we know that this line is divided in half. So let's call that X the sum of those two digits, then this is also x. So this this line sums to 2x. Now 2x must be even. Um, those cells seem to add to 14. So they're even. So these eight cells add up to an even number. But 45, which is the sum for the whole box, is odd. So this is odd, which means it's 3 or 5. And that's not what I was hoping for. I was hoping we were going to get a resolution there. Hmm. Ah, all right, but I know the color of this because I've got to avoid a checkerboard again. So that one can be shaded. That's got to be gray. This gray, this gray has to connect to its friends. So that's got to get out. This, oh, this, I've nearly got a two by two. How could I not see that straight away? So this is, we're, we're slowly but surely getting somewhere here, aren't we? Um, It's probably going to be this line, but I'm not entirely certain. If I know, is there something I know about the world? OK, I don't know what these squares are. They are five and six, apparently. No, botheration. Uh, OK, maybe I can do some Sudoku. Eight. Oh, no. Yeah. OK, where's eight in the middle box? I can do Sudoku. That is, an, in fact, an eight. Exactly. Right. So the minimum value of this digit is three, which means this is adding up to at least 11. OK, but it could be. No, it can't be three, five, six, because then I can't put nine in the box. Yeah. OK, so the nine in this box has to be on this domino, doesn't it? which means that the, the digits, the other digits. So I want to say, where does three go in this box now? Because I don't think it can go on this horseshoe. If I do put three on the horseshoe, I c if I try and put it there, then that has to be a two nine pair and that's not going to work. And if I put it with the nine, that adds up to 12, which makes this a four, which doesn't work. So that is three. I have a feeling my parity trick was rendered a bit redundant by the Sudoku there, um, but never mind. Um, so now what are these digits? These digits are five, six and nine. So obviously we've got to pair the six up with the eight and the five up with the nine to make the maths work on the horseshoe. Um, hmm. <laughs> which I'm sure is very important. Uh, why can't I see how to do this? Maybe, maybe this row. I'm not loving it. I have to say two, four, six and seven. Yeah, I will fill it in because I can see this digits a bit restricted. So that's come down to a four or a six. And is there, there must be something I'm meant to be appreciating. I think about this domino and how it's meant to be colored. So if that's, oh I, yes, of course. Well, this cell can't be green 
because then if it was green, to have make sure this was two colored, this would have to be gray and we'd have three digits the same. So that's definitely gray, which is probably the, the worst outcome because that's really, really not, it's not told me what this one is. Uh, if that was, which is, what do I think it's going to be? I don't know really. I can see there's a nine somewhere down here. I'm not I'm not certain whether it has to be on the line. If we make hmm, I don't know. I'm not sure. I've got a five, eight, nine. There's definitely an eight in this domino. So how do we resolve this in, in a way that gives us some sort of clean decision? I can't use one on the line. So if this is if this is eight, that would have to be gray. Because if it was if it was green, this would well this would add up to more than those two cells would add up to more than nine. So if this is eight this is a double gray and it's not one seven and it's not two six so it'd have to be three and five which would be hugely useful so if this is eight this is just a gray sequence that doesn't seem to matter for con connectivity if if on the other hand this is eight I have a feeling everything's more straightforward then. So this would be five or nine. If it was nine, that would have to be a four, five pair. I think. I think that looks okay. I can't see what's wrong with that immediately. Hmm. Okay. I suspect I now suspect I'm missing something. All right. Let's try. Let's try. Let's try somewhere else. We'll try this column where we've got five sixes and eights to place. Can we do anything with that? That's not eight. That's not uh, six. And other than that, we know nothing. Um, can we do this five nine? No. Yeah, I rather fear this is somehow. I don't think I do know what this line is. If that's 12. Oh, oh. It's the same thing as yesterday. This is what happened at the end of Jay Dyer's puzzle yesterday. Sorry if you've not watched that video, but to get to that point, you would have had to solve one of the best Sudoku puzzles of all time, and you would have spotted this trick at the end. So sorry if I've just done a spoiler, but I've just noticed something really cool about this. If this is four nine, then these squares have to be a one three pair. And there's nowhere in this box to put put a three then. That's beautiful. Ah, oh, I just didn't think that that was in any way. I just didn't think, well, until now, I didn't think there was anything I could do down here. So this cannot be four nine because then that being one three knocks three out of there and you can't put three in that box. That's beautiful, isn't it? So this is three nine. This is four. But I think it's going to matter more up here because this is going to help me with this line, I think. Um, so now we know this is a one, two pair. I know the order. So two, one go into the grid. One, four go into the grid. Three goes in here. In fact, we can do all of this. Look, two and four, this is doing mighty stuff. So now, well now, my phone is buzzing at me. That's okay. Um, right, these are not two anymore. 
Okay, so so what are the actual options for these squares? It's three, five, and nine, isn't it? And there was some option I looked at before where I thought that could be a three, five pair. So, yeah, that was, I think that was, if this was eight, wasn't it? I wanted those to be both gray. So if these are both green, yeah, it doesn't work. Okay, that's that's it's much simpler now. If this was green, how do we make what can we make those add up to that would give a valid total here? Nothing is the short answer. You can't make that domino add up to nine. Um, you can't make it add up to five, and you can't make it add up to three. So there we go. Right, this is grey. That's got to be green to avoid a two by two. These two squares are now the three, five pair adding up to eight that we looked at before. This square is a nine by Sudoku, which means this is a nine, this is a three, this is a three, this is a five. Um, this is a four apparently, so that's no longer a four. Now, has that... Has that told us what's going on at the top of the grid? Sort of. Oh, uh, that's lovely again. This is this is so clever. This puzzle. It's going to take me a long time to finish it again, but it's just there's like tiny beautiful re revelation after tiny beautiful revelation. Look at this line now. Now by Sudoku, it's got a nine on it. But we know this line sums to a single digit total because if I make that grey, then that's a single digit total. If I make that green, that's a single digit total. So the nine must sit on its own. It is the total of that line. Well, it can, And it must be on one side or another and it's not there. So that's got to be nine. And these two squares have got to add up to nine and they're not one eight, they're not two seven, they're not four five, so they are three six. I even know the order, six, three, seven, Five, whoopsie, five, six. Uh, that's, oh, well, that is useful. No, that's six by Sudoku, so that's four. We now know that's grey to avoid. That, so that's, that is how you finish the perimeter. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. Um, this six means this is a... Oh, that's big. That's a five. That's an eight. That's a six. I've only got one line left now. Um... I'm sure we could do something here. Come on. Is it obvious what I meant to do? It could well be. No, oh no, I can't do that. I was about to say nine in box two, but I don't think I can do that. All right, let's try more Sudoku then. I know it's anathema, but we'll try it. That's a seven naked single. So this is a two five pair. Which means these squares are one, three, and four. Now, can we do anything with those? Surely we can. I don't know actually. That square's not. That square's come down to one or four. This column needs one, four, and eight. Oh, I see. So this. So that's a one by Sudoku. That's a four. That must be the eight. That gives me the one and the five. The five and the two. These two digits are now a one three pair. Oh, okay. Well, that's okay. I've got a deadly pattern on ones and threes, but presumably this line somehow will fix that. These squares are two. Oh, these squares are two and four. Two and four. Four and five. Five and nine. The Brighton line. Then this square is going to be a seven by Sudoku. This is a five. This is a nine. And we've got to somehow figure out the remaining shading and make this line work. Okay, well, what I can see, I can only see one way this line can work, actually. Uh, and that's making this six one color and the other three digits add up to it. So that's getting rid of the deadly pattern. So this has got to be three. That's one. That's three. That's one. These three. Are, oh, that's. I've got it. I've got it. Right. 
that is absolutely what a finish right because these three digits are the same color what color can they not be watch for this if they are green these little greys are left lonely stranded in box two and they can't connect or dogly with their friends and that's very sad so we mustn't allow that to happen they've got to be grey that's got to be green that's now a two by two avoid it that's got to avoid a two by two so that's grey that's got to be green to avoid a two by two and that let's just double click grey look it's beautiful it's beautiful you can see you can just see it's all connected i'm not seeing any two by two so if the sudoku's right we've probably probably got it right absolutely fantastic what well mark's right isn't he if you did a puzzle like that every day your life would be filled with quite a lot of joy um and thank you zendari for filling my life with quite a bit of joy that is 60 minutes exceptionally well spent um it's it's is it three stars out of five? it probably is three stars out of five although i think i'm always a bit revisionist when i finish a puzzle because i it you know you look back and you sort of think yes that ob that that obstacle was surmountable yes that obstacle was surmountable but it was quite hard to start this I and mean, if you didn't know the yin yang tricks i think it would be quite hard to figure out that it's it's a perimeter play and and actually it's quite hard to see it was, took me a long time to see it's those two cells that can't be the same um but there was some beautiful stuff up here i mean there was beautiful stuff all over the place and it was a, a, the thing that was refreshing as well was that having the blue lines interact with the shading rather than the three by three boxes it sort of refreshed all the logic didn't it that you normally associate with region sum lines and that trick there with the three nine and that well this not being able to be four nine because the three couldn't go in the box well after yesterday's puzzle i should have been i should have been thinking about that a bit more but i wasn't but i did appreciate it once i found it so zendari take a bow very very great puzzle and i hope you all had a go and managed to do it too let me know in the comments i enjoy the comments especially when they're kind and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic